Lesbians have ruined gaming, which is something my friend told me and I thought was absolutely absurd, but when you look at the circumstances and situations within the video gaming industry, it becomes totally clear and true that this might be a possibility. And I think I'm astounded by the case that this is a possibility because what we've been seeing all throughout the video gaming industry is what we've been seeing recently with trailers like for Ghost of Tsushima's sequel, Ghost of Yote, where we see a change in character for the sequel that oftentimes lead to a result that is difficult for the company that makes that change. And we have had that happen multiple times with Sony exclusive titles where they change the female character into a person that is consistently of the same characteristics and makeup that suddenly dulls the game's interest or enjoyment for a lot of game players. And I think it's that sameness that is killing these titles or sequels, leading to something I like to call sequel death. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the mini sequels we've been seeing from Sony recently, where we have a change in focus and characters, and we start looking at a new female lead that usually has a same gender preference when it comes towards their romantic relationships. And this has happened over several games for Sony consistently these past 10 years, where we get that same same character development that is boring and uninteresting now for a lot of game players and we're seeing this happen with Ghost of Tsushima a sequel right now and we saw this happen previously with titles like The Last of Us and Horizon Zero Dawn and I think that's the thing that is slightly frustrating the gamer base when it comes to some of these new female characters because we know this story already. We know the ideology that's pushing these stories where gamers can predict what's going to happen in the future with a new game that has just been announced with its new trailer. And that's why people are hesitant and even bored with what we're seeing with Ghost of Tsushima already because we can already expect this is a non-binary, same gender preference character that is annoying, bossy, aggressive, and wholly uninteresting because that is the character makeup and model of every change of character that we see see in a sequel of a once predominantly male game or once focused on a male demographic for its audience. This happens consistently throughout the video gaming industry and the entertainment industry where the sequel has been captured and now we're going to make it lame and absolutely gay. And that's what we're seeing right now with Ghost of Tsushima, even though we're only seeing the trailer. And I think this prejudgment is warranted because we've seen it happen so often before. And I think with this game, we see the clues already shaping up to show that is going to be the end result where we're going to see a game following these mundane tropes that have ignored the fan base's plea for actually having something that is engaging and interesting and different for once. But you can see the telltale signs that this game is treading towards a more progressive ideology that wants to lecture and preach to the gamers. And you can look at just the character actress that is playing the lead character for this game and going over her social media profile, her hatred for anyone that has a difference of opinion. You see the foundation for something being laid out where we're going to get a character much in line with her personality because a lot of these voice actors that do delve into these progressive politics, they want a character that is just them. They don't want to create a new character because they're not creative enough to do that. They just want to play themselves everywhere they go. So when I see a person like this with this progressive ideology, they just want to see themselves in everything. They don't want to create anything new. They don't want to create anything interesting. They don't want to have a dialogue or conversation that is created with making a new character that is interesting and engaging. She just wants to see herself in the game and we have the developers that want to do that as well because they're beholding to the corporate overlords at Sony that want to placate these activist organizations because they're getting monies and kickback and influenced by large investment banks that want to see these DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion qualities in all their games and all their personnel that they do hire. And thinking with that logic, I'm pretty scared for Sucker Punch the studio. You can look at the developers currently at Sucker Punch Studios. They're much in line with the actress and her values. And currently, this is not even the same team of people that developed Ghost of Tsushima. We have a new team of people doing things their own way. And I'm hesitant to see the result because we're going to see something that is not in line with what we saw with the original process of Ghost of Tsushima. So this is a, a very tiresome trope that we've been seeing 
happening in the gaming industry and just having that suggestion that lesbians are destroying the gaming industry it sounds absurd but when you look at the character qualities that you're seeing spring out of nowhere consistently throughout the video gaming industry you can just look at ubisoft and their own samurai game where they have a similar characteristics they have a similar development story where there's going to be romance options for same gender romance for both of these characters and you're like how is that possible that we're getting two lesbian samurai women in the same year and i think this is an ideology that has spread throughout the industry where they just want to put out this version of a character ad nauseum because it delivers their message of what they want to see gamers approve of and what they want to see ideologically in the game that fits their own personal taste and that's obviously what we're seeing with assassin's creed shadows even though it was delayed a few months because of its failing of getting pre-orders and acceptance from the audience they're still gonna push along with this game without any changes because it fits their ideology and they have a sunk cost with it as well but the ideology has spread so far and wide when you're looking at the voice actress herself her comments she's always discussing racism homophobia fascism all these things that really don't matter to the gaming audience it's fine for her to do that but it just makes you aware okay gamers are not involved with the creation of this game anymore we're hiring activists now because we're trying to fill a quota we're trying to fill the needs of what the corporate executives want us to fill and i think this is a great example of that where we're having activists take over the the gaming industry in such a way where we can expect the worst with this new character from ghost of tsushima even from the actress herself the voice actress suddenly started talking about having same gender female warriors that's what she wants to see and obviously they chose her because she was the ideal candidate because she only can play herself in the game and i think we can expect to see herself play a version of a character in ghost of yote i don't think we're gonna see anything different from that and i think that's what's draining my expectations for this game and that's what's making me realize that it is probably a possibility that a lot of these games that are being developed are being ruined by this ideology where you have to somehow steal a male oriented franchise and inject some strong aggressive boring and annoying lesbian character that is uninteresting because you want to capture the popularity of something that was there that attracted the male attention and you want to subvert it in order to change the minds or political ideology of the people that were just there to play a video game and i think that's what we're seeing with ghost of yote once it was successful sony probably brought in a bunch of other developers and now we're getting a game from a c team of developers that are there to purport their own ideology of what they feel is ideal for the gamer to actually learn and praise and we've seen that fail consistently over the years you can just look at some of the properties that were once heralded as games to lead the playstation kind of do numbers below their highest peak and you can see this with horizon zero dawn and of course the last of us these games barely scratch nine million copies sold and their predecessors sold over 20 to 25 million copies you're losing 50 percent of your customer base right there it's just showing you lost a lot of customers with this strategy of making a lot of these male oriented games into lesbian oriented games because there's just a small minority of people that are willing to play those games and you're just tricking another audience to play those games and they'll get burnt out and your next sequel will be an absolutely failure so that's why i call this sequel death where we have one successful game come out and that game studio is captured and eventually made into a different studio focused on a message that you want to deliver to gamers that is the antithesis of the original game or property that came out beforehand and i think we saw this with horizon zero dawn we saw this with the last of us we saw this with a lot of the new tomb raider games coming out we're seeing this with assassin's creed shadows and now we're seeing this with ghost of tsushima where it's doing the same thing that Sony is a specialist at doing, which is killing their franchises. And I think that's what we're seeing with this overall situation happening in the video gaming industry where lesbianism may be ruining the gaming industry because it seems like all the main characters now are lesbian. Uh, and I'm wondering who came up with this and who thinks this is appealing to the majority of the fan base it's really a weird subject to talk about but i think it really highlights what's happening in the video gaming industry where there's an ideology that's trying to push for a certain character profile and we're seeing that profile 
appear aggressively these past few years and i think horizon and last of us are the key examples and now we have two lesbian samurai games coming out at the same time there must be an agenda out there and i think that's the case we're seeing with these games coming out but that's just my crazy theory i just want to talk about it maybe i'm wrong but i feel like there is a situation where we're seeing a lot of these male oriented franchises be subverted into a lesbian oriented franchise and i think it's being done consistently with developers and consultancy firms that are trying to propagate a philosophy a political philosophy within the video gaming industry but you tell me what you think about the situation do you think lesbians are ruining the gaming industry i wouldn't say regular lesbians no i'm not trying to say that i'm just saying the the concept of just making all these male oriented games into lesbian oriented games where it's trying to push off all the fan base that were playing the game previously that's what i'm talking about all regular lesbians i'm not talking about you you're fine just enjoy your life but tell me what you think about the situation like comment share subscribe this is wagner knows why catch you next time